Hello, and welcome to the Surefire Negotiation Tactics course. In this first module, you will be taught what is the win-win concept. Negotiation is a vital skill to have in business. At the end of this course, rest assured that you will be a superstar negotiator, and you'd be surprised by how much money negotiation can save you. With that said, let's get started. To many people, Negotiating is a difficult task, and not many people can become very successful with the art of negotiation. However, this is not the case if you truly understand the win-win concept. When negotiating, we must always consider the other party's situation as well. If you can strike a deal that is a winner for both parties, then you're on the right track. With that said, you must always focus on forming a relationship that works out for both of you and the party you are trying to negotiate with. If it's a winner for you and a winner for the other, there is no reason why a deal cannot be formed. So keep in mind that when you make an offer, make sure the offer also favors the other person's needs. Make sure there is an assurance on both sides and always think win-win. Moving on, we will dwell deeper into how to create win-win relationships. The first essential guideline is to be fair. This is the most important concept that you have to always consider when you're negotiating with people. You have to ensure fairness in both sides since a negotiation is meant to keep matters fair and equal to one another. Therefore, if it's one-sided and favorable to only one person, then there is no point in negotiating. What's the use to negotiate or being a negotiator if you only intend to benefit yourself? There's absolutely no use for you to negotiate with others if you are focused on the side that can only benefit you, if you do not consider other things that can also be beneficial to others, they might not agree to your needs, hence both sides get nothing in return. Next, you also have to be very reasonable when negotiating with others. Make sure that everything in your talk will go smoothly and beneficial to your side, as well as to other people whom you are negotiating with. For instance, you own a company and you have to negotiate with your employees in regards to the salary increase that they are demanding. Then you have to present to them the statement of account of your company to explain why you can't afford to increase their salary. Learning this concept of negotiation is very important, like when you are dealing with employees who are developing a certain company. The more they understand the company owner, then the more they will realize how they need to be devoted to their work, so that in return, they can also get the benefits as an employee. When you negotiate about something, one most vital thing that you should keep in mind is, of course, reality, especially if you are talking about financial matters. Because most people these days are not aware of reality, especially in the financial side of life, this is because there are several individuals who are looking forward to gain their millions, hence are doing nothing to generate the amount they want. In this case, do you think it is easy to negotiate with your eyes closed when it comes to financial matters these days? Well, absolutely not. You will never simply close a negotiation upon less thoughts or consideration. Always keep in mind that no one wants to be undercut. Therefore, you don't have to be the first person to do it for others. Never use your excellent skill and knowledge in negotiation to fool people and leading them to deal with something that will cause negative effects for them. Dirty negotiation is a fairly common, especially with business people, but not all. This is just a state of fact. For instance, a factory business. It needs to dispose of toxic ma materials somewhere. Then they have to negotiate with the people who live in the nearest place, whether they can do their disposals here, but not telling them the danger and effects that might cause them. The people, on the other hand, if they are unaware of the danger, and if you do not explain to them about it, they will accept and allow you to do so without any realization of what harm may happen to them. Actually, this can also be a vulnerable tease to other responsible business people, especially if they are running out of time in meeting the amount they want to earn for the company, as well as the time allotted to do the chores that they have to do. But if you are really a responsible and fair person, no matter what amount you are earning, neither you have a very big business nor the company, you will still have the heart for the poor and to be fair-minded. Businesses do require several skills and knowledge in an individual to achieve the success that they desire. 
One of these skills is, of course, the skill to negotiate, which is truly very important when it comes to managing a business. It is vital to closing business deals, fixing manpower issues, as well as business operation negotiations. Negotiation skills are one of the most vital skills in business, since this can involve most aspects of business, from its operation responsibilities to its financial aspects, which is the most important business aspect that always has to be observed. The skill is also vital to make sure that everything is going smoothly in their business. For instance, through great negotiation skill, a certain business personality can greatly avoid rallies and negative activities from their employees, who are also the ones who have a huge contribution in the development of their business. As a business personality, you also have to make sure that you're providing fair benefits to your employees. This is the most important thing that a responsible businessman should have in mind providing fair compensation for their employees. It is because without their employees, the companies are nothing. The life and existence of a certain company rely with diligent and responsible employees. Negotiation skill is also vital for closing business deals with other big companies. In this case, one should be aware of essential negotiation strategies that they have to practice and keep in mind while they're negotiating. These strategies include portraying a win-win concept one would, should make sure that what they are saying during the negotiation can also apply a win-win situation for the other side or to the company they are dealing with. This way, they can avoid experiencing any risk of losing great deals when it comes to closing certain business transactions. Employees and other business concerns can also be settled effectively when the business owner is responsible and most importantly skilled in negotiating. A very common scene when it comes to these cases is, of course, when the employees are asking for additional amount or at least a fair benefit of salary or monthly compensation. If you lack the skill to negotiate, you either give your employees what they demand or you plainly refuse the pay increment, which might result your employees to resign and quit the job. As you can see, it's a lose-lose situation if you don't know how to negotiate to win and favor both sides. It shows how important and useful it is for a business personality to have and develop excellent knowledge in negotiating. It is quite true that there are several people these days that are searching and dreaming to have a job, but this is not a valid reason for a certain business personality not to provide the things that they should for their employees. In fact, this can be their inspiration to being a very responsible business personality so that they can succeed in the business world which they choose to venture in. Negotiation skill is extremely important in most businesses and even in our daily lives because it is the only way for you to express yourself and make people understand what is on your mind and what is the meaning of everything that you do and everything that you are into. To understand everything between the people around you is the key for you to develop great negotiation skill. Because it is essential for you for the need to come up with a win-win negotiation concept for both sides when it comes to negotiations, Therefore, if you have plans to engage in any business, whether it is online or offline, then you have to make sure that you are knowledgeable enough when it comes to negotiating with other people of various statuses in life. Welcome to Module 2 of Surefire Negotiation Tactics. In this morning, you will learn how to identify your goals and objectives as part of your negotiation process. Before striking a deal, you need to know the ultimate outcome that you want from your deal. This way, you have an end in mind to strategies your negotiation accordingly. We all have our own objectives and goals in life. And every time we talk about it, it makes us realize how important it is to have goals and objectives in our life. And every time we think about it, we focus on the positive directions. However, life isn't all about positive and good things. There are times we have to take a very long road just to reach our goals. Despite that you keep on moving, facing those challenges and showing developments to the people around you, you want to let them know that you are heading somewhere in your life. Setting goals in life is like establishing a plan that needs to be followed in order to reach your goals. By setting goals in your life, the first you should do is to list everything down so that you can see and plan on how to accomplish it. Writing down the list of things you want to do will not only help you manage your goals and objectives in life, but will also give you an idea of how to hold on to your goals and objectives. However, 
Some people tend to give up after all the struggles they have undergone. Sometimes, some are so motivated and focused that they didn't notice that they are dissatisfied with the outcome. And maybe because they did not achieve their goals the way they wanted it to be, fulfilling objectives and goals in one's life is somewhat difficult. But if you aim to spend more time and exert more effort, then surely you can achieve them. That said, here are some elements that you should consider in order to accomplish your goal. Firstly, you have to be very specific with your goals. There are many things that can affect your goals, so you can identify every detail of your goals so that you will know how to deal with it. If you don't know your target, then you can't aim and shoot for it. It's like you're shooting something just to make birds fly away from you, but in this case, you want to hit and not miss. In every step and move that you take, you have to bear in mind that whatever fruit you gain out of it, you have to take it positively and not regret a single thing. Be optimistic. Then find time to reflect and assess all your struggles and accomplishments because through that, you can weigh up if you finally have reached the goals in life. Secondly, stay in track with your goals progress. Continuous tracking of your goals can give you an idea on how to appraise and evaluate it. Then you will be able to know if you're in the right direction or not. In addition, go through all those goals that you were unable to accomplish. By this way, you can still look for any possible method on how to fulfill them. The third is, don't be too ambitious. Set goals and objectives that are realistic instead of fantasy goals which are unattainable. In order for everything to work well, you have to concentrate and be conscientious. Do some self-evaluation. This one is so significant in the process of planning and setting evaluation can be the best asset for you to reach your objectives and goals. Next you should formulate a timetable. Timetables can help you to compute and keep in track with the sum of time that you spend for every goal that you have already accomplished. If you are aware on that, spent too much time just to accomplish your objectives, then maybe you were not focused and punctual enough, or perhaps you just did something wrong about the way. Lastly, just make sure that you have the passion in your goals. Even if you exert too much effort just to achieve your goal, but if your enthusiasm is not there, then it's useless, and it will only lead you to failures and miseries. Try to define and identify your goals and objectives first, then try and ask yourself, are these the goals I really want to accomplish? Remember, in order to reach and succeed for your ambitions, you should always do it with interest and passion. Setting goals and objectives consist of planning processes. However, if you really want to be successful and achieve your goals and objectives, there are some things you can do just to reach them. Many people have misunderstandings about goals and objectives. Many people think that these two words are similar, but they are wrong. Goals and objectives are different from one another. They both have different meanings. For you to have some idea, goals are much larger than objectives. And it has a larger accomplishment, while objectives are just second. Objectives act as the leg for goals to stand out. Without a good objective, goals can't stand alone. That's why goals and objectives need each other to have a greater accomplishment. So, why do we have to set goals and objectives for our business? Why do we need it? You may consider yourself as a successful businessman, but did you really achieve what you really wanted? Putting your goals and objectives together can help you to attain overall success that you want. As a matter of fact, there is no business establishment that succeeds without proper goals and objectives for their business. Here are some ideas on how to set your business goals and objectives correctly and on the right track. Running your own business today isn't easy because at this time, we are now being surrounded by so many gigantic companies that you will definitely find it difficult to deal with and so hard to compete with. But running your own business, you don't have much of those problems. All you have to do is create it, build it, and believe in it, making your business successful. You don't have to be scared of them, but instead be competitive and aggressive. Just make sure that you have the right business objectives and goals, like giving your customer satisfaction through your service and assistance. That is one of the most important goals and objectives that a company should strive for. When you are establishing your own company, you have to prioritize your customer satisfactions and don't think about your competitors. Don't concentrate on how you can compete, 
but deal with them. They are not the one giving you income, but your customer does. When you have already established your firm, then it is time that you look for a project that can help you improve and boost your company. Sometimes a company also needs someone that can help and assist them in their business. That's why when they offer some projects to other leading companies for help. So, if you want to have some projects to work with other companies, you have to negotiate with them. Negotiating for a project takes a lot of time, and there are things that you need to consider when negotiating. When negotiating, it is a really big help if you have skills in negotiating. You also have to know the negotiation style of the person you are negotiating with in order for you to negotiate easily and effortlessly. Also, have an idea on how to present yourself during a negotiation. Negotiators have three types. Knowing about it can give you more ideas on how you can handle and deal with them. The bottom line negotiator, or the strong, the less dogmatic negotiator, and the meek negotiator. It is good if you choose the right negotiation style to use and identify the negotiators that you're going to deal with. Remember, winning the project is one of your main purposes. Apart from that, negotiations should end with a win-win result. What does this win-win negotiation really mean? Negotiation creates a big impact for your business, and it also depends on how you negotiate with other people. Just put it on your mind that when you finish negotiating, the result should be a win-win. You will be given further details about win-win strategy. So let's begin. First, draw a vertical line that intersect with the horizontal line. On top, write the word issue and draw a plus sign while the minus sign is below. Then write the word relation. For example, both parties have an interest in both issue and relation. When this happens, they think that the issue and relation are favorable for both sides, so they have to come up with a strategy to make a deal, a win-win result, meaning both parties will have an equal opportunity. In order for your business to last long in the business world, you have to be very keen and art on how to deal with others. So building a good working relationship with one another does matter, and always make sure that your deal and negotiation is profitable for both parties. In this kind of negotiation, one should be named loser or at the losing end. It should be fair in all aspects. Both parties should have their own equal share and opportunities. Welcome to the final module where you will learn the top tactics for negotiation. These tactics you will be learning have been proven and tested. Apply them to your business and you will be saving a fortune from them. Without further anticipation, let's get started immediately. As you have learned in the earlier modules, negotiation tactics are very vital for a person to learn, especially for those who are planning to engage themselves in any type of business. This is because it can be quite easy for anyone to settle things only if they have enough knowledge and skills to negotiate. By now, you should understand the win-win concept. Firstly, an individual should always be fair, whether they are negotiating with others, especially in business matters. They have to make sure they close a fair deal and not neglect other people's needs. Second, if you have to also be reasonable when negotiating with others, make sure you take into consideration about a people and other companies' conditions. Lastly, you have to be realistic when having a business negotiation. Being realistic is essential, especially if you are negotiating with your company, employees about their compensation. By being realistic and honest, you can be certain enough to set things right and fair between you, your company, and of course, to your employees. These three strategies have proven to be effective, especially through the knowledge of the following top tactics of negotiation. If you want a certain company or a person to be your partner and that you want your negotiation plan successful, then you have to make sure you offer them help without expecting any returns. On the other hand, it can also be a great way for you to be certain of acquiring favors from the businesses or the people that you have helped. Actually, this negotiation tactic has always been mistaken as things that are done on purpose. Although it's partly true, but it greatly depends on the preferences and motives of a certain person. Its purpose could also be for good, 
and considerable reasons that can cause advantages for both parties. Hence, it can also displease others depending on the attitude of the negotiator. It is because there are also skilled and knowledgeable negotiators who choose to deceive other people for their own advantages. So if you are to negotiate, then you have to refrain from doing such things because you will never know if the one you're negotiating with also has their own hidden agenda and your plans might backfire on you. If you are into the service business, then you have to always make sure to barter your service in a fair and right place. For instance, your render services are without fixed charge, so you have to make sure that you rate it higher so when your customer wants to negotiate the price, you can comply to your customer at the same time, <coughs> you don't go beyond your own budget. You always have to be fair to your customers and barter your services to them in a right and fair way. Never agree to a certain agreement if you know that you or your customer is at loss, you can always give them discounts when they do not intend to negotiate about your price. This is also to be responsible enough as a business personality, since you know that the price you offer to the customer is not the original price. These barter instances are very common in business, and you should master it if you want to gain success. This was already tackled in, in learning about barter. However, one should always keep in mind that it is not recommended for any service business owner to name the fixed price of their services after they close the deals or if the customer is not asking for it. Once the customer asks the best price, then all you have to do is, of course, to tell them a higher price, at least 10% higher than the fixed price so that the one, once the consumer tells his bargain price, then it would still be the fixed price. This might sound as one of the business tricks However, that is partly correct. But it is also needed in business, especially for people who are rendering service businesses. In some ways, it is also one of the best ways for them to maintain fixed and the right price for the services that they render. It is fairly understandable that some of the consumers are always asking for discounts. In fact, it can sometimes go below the original and fair price of the services or products that you are offering. The thing that you should learn is how to nicely explain to them that you can't afford to give discounts that they are asking for. This is also to make sure that you can close the deal with the potential customers that you are negotiating to. Even if you are just a beginner in the business niche you're in, you still have to make sure that you can cope with these solutions. Otherwise, you will have an unsure success for the business that you have started. This can also explain the importance of learning negotiation strategies and tactics. For most profitable businesses, competition is inevitable. So as a business owner, if you want to seek to become an excellent negotiator, it is vital for you to make sure that you have enough information about your business competitors. This is because you can use this information when negotiating with your customers by offering them additional services and offers that your competitors don't cover. Always keep in mind that if you want to get even with your competitors, then you need to know them fully. This way, you can work out the essential things to develop further in your business. This may sound like a cheat. However, being in business requires you to learn how to seek for your advantage. If you are not a responsible business personality, then you will just cheat for your advantage alone and not for the drawbacks of your competitors. If you love your business and are genuine about it, then you also have to love your business competitors since they are the one who adds spice to your business venture and perhaps with joint ventures in time to come. This is the most important is to always be successful to close business deals or negotiations in a more advantageous way for both your business and your consumer. In business negotiations, you also have to make sure you provide a win-win business deal for your consumers. Make it to the point that if they also benefit as much as you do, so they will be more than happy to accept the deal that you have offered them. You can offer them great discounts and bonuses as an advantage for them. This way, they feel it's worth doing business with you because they also get something in return. This can also lead them to patronize your products and services. There are still various tactics that you can do depending on your business niche. All you have to do is be knowledgeable enough when it comes to the pros and cons of your business. 
This way, you can come up with the best and accurate concepts or ideas that will help you close business deals and gain success as a negotiator. Actually, negotiating tactics are generally learned at home, school, workplace, and anywhere. As long as you know how to make a great and fair deal, then you can be a potential negotiator. You will also need to know several things, the business as well as the considerations when negotiating. In this case, you will have to be responsible and fair enough so that you can please others at the same time. Get what you want. Always remember that negotiation tactics and strategies are meant to strike fair deals whereby both parties benefit. Do not abuse your skills as a negotiator to crack selfish and one-sided deals for it may give you a bad reputation in return. Therefore, if you are a negotiator, then you have to always make it a point to use it as a nice and fair way so that you can also gain lucrative and nice returns, whether you are into business or you have a very good job.